Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be showing you a great method of making an Ash Waste theme base for your games of Necromunda from Games Workshop. But you can of course use this kind of basing for all sorts of different armies and battlefield conditions. Essentially what it's going to look like is a waste of ashes, so perfect for any kind of battlefield that's gone through some kind of apocalyptic war, so perhaps after a nuclear war, something like that. It's really fun to do and we hope you enjoy it. We'll see you at the desk. To make your Ash Waste base, the first thing that you need to do is decide on features that you want to have on there whilst you're building your miniatures, just to make sure they fit nicely amongst all the different details we're going to be putting on there. I'm going to be doing quite a few details on this particular base to give you some ideas, but what I recommend you do is just space them out amongst all of your troops, and if you want to, you can have some models standing on top of them, spaced around them, the choice really is yours. But what we want to look at is things that are going to be buried in the dust, so things like scrap metal, skulls, things like that, anything that's small little pieces that you can use from your bits box and stick on the base, ideal for this kind of thing, and that's why what I'll be doing. But of course to get the atmosphere right what we want to have is some rocks as well and here ideally we want to have the rocks that have the appearance that they've been sandblasted. So the kind of thing that you see in things like Death Valley you know with those layers on it. And to do that it's actually really simple. What you need is some of the decorative bark that you can find and I've got some pieces just here. You can see it's ideal for the sort of thing that we're doing because it has that layered appearance to it and there are cracks in it. It's ideal for this sort of feeling that we want to go for here. Now this stuff is really easy to get in garden centres where it comes in massive bags and it's really cheap and it is a very large bag. If you're going to be doing bases like this, it's a little bit too much, unless of course you're doing a big scenic piece or some big scenic pieces for your battlefield. In this case though, if you're just doing some bases like me, what I recommend you do is just keep your eyes open as you're going around daily life, because you'll see this kind of stuff all over the place, in car parks, things like that. These pieces I actually stole from the garden, so don't tell the missus, but they're ideal for what we're doing just here. And stick them onto your base, you just need some super glue. So what I'm going to do is just get the base and just pick whereabouts it's going to go. So just around this side here will do just fine. All you do is just put some glue on there and then press down your piece of bark into it. Now this will take a minute or so to dry and when it is dry I'm just going to add a few extra details too and then we'll move on to some painting. And here we go, the larger bark is glued down. You can see I've also added this little canister of some scrap metal buried in the ground there too. And I've not put any smaller rocks in there yet, but don't worry, we are going to add those later on. But what we do now, once this is all built up, is you build your miniature around it. And if you want to have your model standing on top of these rocks, then the thing to bear in mind is that they can be a little bit fragile if they're just glued on top of it. So if you're going to do that, I do recommend you put a pin through the feet of your miniature going all the way through that rock into the base, just to make it nice and secure. But once your model's built up, you then go and paint your miniature. And so the colour you're undercoat this is largely going to depend on what you're actually painting. In this case what I'm going to do is spray this with some Zandri to spray because that's what I'd use for nomads though it doesn't matter at all what colour you use here. But I'm going to go and spray that, when we come back we'll add some texture to it. Here we have the base now undercoated with Zandri dust and at this stage what you do is just carry on painting your miniature and once you've done so you can then come back to the base to add that texture on it to really finish it off. And for this what I'm going to be using is some texture paint to get that sort of fine dusty feel that we want to go for here. The one I'm going to use is from AK Interactive. It's this one called Dry Ground which is ideal for what we're doing here. This is really nice and fine so it's going to get that dusty appearance to it and it's the ideal colour for what we need to and you get loads of it in this pot as well so it's really good value. But if you don't have access to this you can use a Citadel paint as an alternative and the one to use is a Grell and Badland. Now this is the wrong colour so once it's completely dry you will need to paint it with something like Carrick Stone which is a pretty close approximation to what this texture paint I'm going to be using is. Something like that will be fine. But what we also need to do when applying it is just check the base because some of these bases can have little sort of effects on them which we need to cover up. So for example the base of the Hillamites. If you take a look at this one you can see there's a little dimple in the middle of it and this is where the injection moulding process happens. Now if you don't put it on thickly enough that will show through and it kind of breaks the illusion a little bit so be sure to put on plenty to make sure things like that are covered up. But for our base what we need to do is apply this onto the open spaces of it. So to do this what you need to do is get hold of a spatula or there's the little um, texture tool that's it at ourselves. There's also old brushes and things. I've got an old brush for this, one of the regiment brushes from the army painter. And with this all you've got to do is scoop up a good amount and apply it onto the flat of your base. So you just literally just paste it on and start moving it around. Now it takes quite a while to dry, so whilst it is drying you can really add to it if you want to and move it around and adjust it. And what we want to do is really cake it up so we get the appearance of it 
blowing across the plane and starting to build up against these features. So as I put it on, what I'm going to do is really make sure I put plenty on areas like this, like the little canister here and move it up so it's kind of kicking up on the side of it there like that. But otherwise it's just a matter of manipulating it around, getting it fairly even and making sure to work it into nooks and crannies too. Now, whilst it's still wet, you also have the opportunity to do a bit more to it because this works as a glue really for putting extra bits of texture in there, which is why I've got some sand just here and I've also got some bits of slate. And for the sand, it's gonna use some of these larger rocks. All you do is just drop them in and just make sure to press them down. And then with your texture paints, just make sure you build it up a little bit around them to help seal it down. So just poke it around like that to help blend it in. Now, this paint does take quite a while to dry. And in fact, AK Interactive do recommend that you leave it for 24 hours to make sure it's fully dry. I found through experimenting, you can usually get away with about six hours for this sort of use here. But if you're not sure, just leave it overnight before you do any more painting to it. But what we're gonna do now is, well, I'm gonna finish applying this. Then we're gonna leave it for around about half an hour because after that length of time, there's a little bit more we can do to this, adding a bit extra detail here. So that's what we're gonna do now. And we'll come back, we'll add those extra details. The texture's been drying for about 20 minutes now, so we're at a point where we can start to play around with it a little bit. And the first thing we're gonna do is just to even it out a little bit. And to do this, all you need is some old sponge. And I've got a piece just here, you can see I've just torn some off. And I just made sure it's flat on one side, so nice and smooth. And I also dunked it in some water so it's damp as well, and that's gonna stop the paint from sticking to it. And with this, all you do on these open parts where you want it to be a little bit smoother is just gently start dabbing it on. And what this is going to do is, first of all, it's going to look a little bit bumpy because of the texture of the, well, the water soaking into it. But as it dries, what it'll do is smooth it out and this way you'll get more of those smooth dunes and the appearance of it so just very gently there like that. Now in addition if you want to you can do some marks in here for things like tyres and things from various vehicles that are driving around and to do this what I've got is one of the wheels from one of the Orlock vehicles that's inside the ash waste box, uh, box though any sort of wheel will do so this is the wheel that I've got just here you see and again I made sure it's damp because with this what we can do is roll it into the texture. Now it's not going to print perfectly clearly which is fine because it is ash dust of course so what it can do though is mark in things for us because we're going to have it running along there and then to accentuate it a little bit more, we just need an old brush. And with this, all we do is just start stippling in the same sort of area. This way it just etches it a bit further into the ground. You can see now I got all the different patterns and things marked into the texture paint and it's drying, but as I mentioned, it does take quite a long time to dry. So here's one I made earlier, which has been drying overnight and you can see is, whilst a little bit different in the details, it's still largely the same with where the rock is, with the dust going over it, the little bit of metal we got down there and a little marking in the ground just there too. And with that dry now, what we can do is start painting it and adding a bit more color to it. And we're actually gonna start by blocking out the rocks. And for this, I want them to be really dark. So I'm gonna go for a near black. The color I'm gonna be using is Death Reaper from Tooth and Coats Paints, but I'll alternative from Citadel would be Corvus Black. And for this, what we're looking to do is just base coat them with this color at this stage. So it's just a matter of getting that paint ready on your palette. So just a little dollop there like that. And then for the brush, just go for whatever's appropriate to the size of the rocks that you're doing. So in this case, I'm starting out with a medium layer brush from Citadel. Feel free to go for a large one for some of the bigger ones though. Throughout this process, you just got to, as ever, make sure the paint's thinned down. And then it's just a matter of blocking these in. And as you are doing this, keep an eye out for where the texture is of all of that sort of texture paint that we've got. Because as you get up to it, just make sure you do a broken line so it doesn't look too unnatural where the two of them meet. With the rocks painted, the next thing to do is to change the color of the texture because right now it's nowhere near the right color for being ash. So what we need to do is make it much grayer. And to do this, I'm gonna do something a little bit unusual. I'm gonna use a dark gray paint. And what I've got is some dungeon stone gray and this is from Two Thin Coats. Though if you wanna go for Citadel, this would be something like Mechanica Standard Gray as a close approximation for it. And what we're gonna do is heavily thin it down with some water to turn it into kind of a wash. But then also I'm gonna be mixing in some varnish for it. And the varnish I'm gonna be using is the Ultramat varnish from AK Interactive, which is nice and reliable. And what this is gonna do is give it a dead matte finish so it'll make it appear more like ash. So ideal for this kind of thing. What we need to do is create the mix first of all. So I'm gonna start out with some of that gray. So we just need to get a little bit into the palette just here. So that will do just fine. And then I'm going to add two drops of the varnish. So all we need is carefully one and two, and there we go. And then what we need to do is dilute it with water as well. So what I'm gonna do is just get plenty on here and I'm using a wash brush from Citadel for this. It's gonna heavily thin that down. So add plenty of water in there like that, two brushfuls, 
and a third for good measure, letting it to a really, really runny version of that paint. And then with this, all we need to do is just paint it over that texture. So load it with a good amount of your brush, pick a starting point, so around here, for example, and just apply it, then start pushing it around. And we're looking for this sort of strength across all the texture of the base. So once you paint this all over it, give it plenty of time to dry. It'll take around about 20 minutes before we can move on to the next stage. The mix is now completely dry and you can see now the ground is a little bit greyer. Not quite as grey as we want it to be by the time we've finished, but it is an important step on the way to getting it. And before we do any more of that grey on there, what we now need to do is to dry brush it to bring out some of the texture. For this, what I'm going to be using is some Corax White, and this is to start to build towards the sort of little white flecks you get in ash. And to put it on, what we need is a smaller dry brush. I'm going from an Army Painter Hobby one here. And this is going to be a very light dusting with this colour, so you don't need very much of it on your brush, but what you do need to do is get some tissue to work into the bristles and remove the excess paint. So really go at it until hardly anything is appearing on that texture of the paper, so there's hardly any paint left there. And then with this, what we need to do is lightly start going back and forth across the texture on the ground and also the rocks. So very gently like this, so we get just a little bit of this colour catching that raised texture. With that dry brush done, we're going to leave the ash for the time being and return to it later because before we do so, what we need to do is paint any scrap metal that appears on the base. And for this, we want to make it nice and rusty. So I'm going to start out with a deep silver colour, and here I'm going to be using some Surcoat Silver. The equivalent for this, a close approximation, would be Lead Belcher from Citadel. Now once that's dry, what we need to do is go over it with some Typhus Corrosion to make it nice and grimy and give it some texture. And once that's dry, what we're then going to do is dry brush it with some Riser Rust to make a nice bright orangey rust. But first of all, we need to base coat it, and so here I'm using Surcoat coat silver and to apply it I've got that medium layer brush from Citadel and with this as ever you just need to get some of this thinned down on your palette and once you've done so it's just a matter of base coating all of that metal. Now whilst you're doing this just be careful as you get close to all of the ash and the dust because you don't want it to get onto that instead just carefully paint it up to it again with that slightly broken line to get a nice natural distinction between the two so very carefully there like that but otherwise it's just a matter of blocking this detail in. Once that silver is completely dry, you're then ready for some typhus corrosion to apply over the top of the metal. And when applying this, use an older brush. So I'm using an old regiment brush here from the Army Painter. The reason is because this paint has a gritty texture in it, and which can really start to gum up the bristles. So you don't want to use your best brushes when you're applying this. Once that typhus corrosion is completely dry too, we can then move on to some riser rust. And for this, you just need a smaller dry brush and just very carefully, gently start brushing across it to give that orange hue, just for some fresher rust. And there we are, with that we've now got the rusty metal and so we can return to the ash. And for this what we now need to do is make it a little bit greyer and add also a little bit of variety into the tones of colour to give some different parts of the ash showing through. So some deeper bits of ash that are going to be a little bit blacker. And so for this we're going to return to that mix we made earlier on. So remember it was dungeon stone grey which I diluted using some matte varnish and also water. But we also need to create a similar mix of a darker colour now. For this I'm going to be using Death Reaper and from Citadel a close approximation to this will be Corvus Black. And what we need to do is just thin it down the same sort of way. So once again on the palette we need to get that ready. So just get a little bit of the black paint in here. So just a small amount there will do just fine. And then we need that varnish too. So again here I'm going to be using two drops of this. So start out with one and then two. And then again I'm going to be using that wash brush just like we did earlier on. So we want plenty of water now. Just get a good amount in your brush. Go for one two and then three for good measure and then mix those together so you can see it's a similar consistency now but a much much darker colour. So with this what we want to do is mostly be applying the grey and it's still good from earlier on because I'm using this kind of dimple trace and making it still pliable at the moment. But every now and then we're going to add in some of the darker colour. So I'm going to start out by getting some of the grey ready on my brush and with this what we want to do is just start applying it onto the surface and you don't have to do everywhere but you do want to cover a good amount of it just painting on like this and then every now and then just get a little bit of the darker colour on your brush and you don't need to wash it for this. Just it into that sort of area there and just let the two mix there like that. And if you want to make it more intense you can remove paint off and some tissue, get a little bit more and dot that in there like that to make it a little bit stronger. But you just let them mix as you go along, switching between the colours and just working your way across the base. Now remember that tyre mark that we did in there earlier on? I definitely want to make this darker to make it appear that it's been disturbed and all upturned around here. So I'm going to make sure I've got grey all over that and then I'm going to get some of the darker mix and introduce this into here as well to help mark it out. So just all the way in there like that. But see, it's just a matter of applying this all over and then just letting it dry.
Those mixers are now dry as well, and you can see they're given a nice matte finish and also a mottled appearance to things as well. And so to bring it all together now, all we've got to do is one more dry brush, once again, of Corax White for those whiter parts of the ash. And once again, I'm just going to very lightly dry brush this onto it. So I'm back to that hobby dry brush from the Army Painter. So you a very small amount again, and just make sure you work most of it into the bristles and then off on that tissue so there's hardly any left on your brush before you start to apply it. And then it's just a matter of very gently start brushing it back and forth across the whole base to get the nice bits of texture standing out with this sort of greyish white colour. Now once this is done, all you've got to do is paint the rim of the base, and this can be any colour you like, but in this case, I'm going to be going for a black. And with the rim of the base now painted, the ash waste base is now complete. So as you've seen, doing this kind of base really revolves around that texture paint. And when you're putting it on, just make sure it is completely dry before you do anything else to it, because it will ruin the effect if it's not. This kind of texture paint does take quite a bit of time to dry, so leave it for at least six hours, but I do recommend leaving it overnight. But aside from that, as you've seen, doing this kind of base is really simple. So have fun using it, and we'll see you again very soon.